In the last three years, I have reviewed over 100 projectors from all different price categories, and historically you could get a usable projector for around $100 and a very decent projector for about $200. But there wasn't much reason to spend more than that unless you wanted to raise your budget all the way up to around $800. But in this video, I've got 15 new projectors priced from $200 to $600 to see if doubling or tripling your budget will give you two or three times the performance in 2024. In the first test, we'll measure their brightness, contrast, color space coverage, and power draw. Then we'll test ideal placement and off-axis focus. We'll put each projector head-to-head -to, -head to test overall viewing experience. After that, we'll test each projector's fan noise and speaker quality. Then we'll look at their smart OS app compatibility. And finally, for gamers, we'll test input lag. For a price of $200 exactly, the least expensive projector that we'll be testing today is the Redeer P7. And like most projectors in this price range, the Redeer is a single LCD projector that creates an image by shining a bright white LED light through a 1080p color LCD screen. The P7's Amazon listing claims to have 1100 ANSI lumens, but in my testing it only had 601 ANSI lumens while drawing 127 watts of power. Single LCD projectors tend to have higher contrast than DLP projectors, and the Redeer was no exception with an impressive contrast ratio of 2850 to 1, and a black floor of 0.024 nits. However, a major downside of single LCD projectors is that they tend to have much lower color space coverage. In testing using CalMan professional calibrating software with my Portrait C6 colorimeter, the Redeer was able to achieve just 71% coverage of the SDR Rec 709 color space, meaning we can expect the colors to look a little bit dull compared to more expensive DLP or triple LCD projectors. After that, for $229 is the Wanbo T2 Max 1080p single LCD projector. The T2 Max is significantly smaller and lighter than the Redeer, but that comes at the cost of brightness, where the T2 Max outputs just 204 ANSI lumens while drawing 52 watts instead of the 450 lumens that Wanbo claims. The black floor of the T2 Max was also slightly higher than the Redeer, leading to a much lower contrast ratio of 736 to 1, and the T2 Max also had lower color space coverage and was only able to display 60.4% of standard dynamic range colors. Next for $239 is the projector that I've been recommending for the last year, the 1080p single LCD Nexigo PJ40, which has received both hardware and software upgrades since last year's video, and the version that we're going to be looking at today is the PJ40 Gen 2. In my testing, this version of the PJ40 outputs 692 ANSI lumens while drawing 140 watts, which is 98% of Nexigo's 700 ANSI lumen claim. And even though the black floor was slightly higher than the Redeer, the additional brightness allowed the PJ40 to narrowly take over first place for contrast at 2,859 to 1. The PJ40 also had significantly better SDR color space coverage at 77.3%, putting it in the lead for all three categories. Next for $250 is the 1080p single LCD Wanbo TT, which is similar in size and weight to the lower priced Wanbo T2 Max. But unfortunately, the higher price doesn't get it any closer to Wanbo's claimed brightness, outputting just 253 ANSI lumens, which is less than 40% of its advertised 650 lumens. The Wanbo TT did have a significantly lower black floor than the T2 Max at 0.01 nits, resulting in a respectable contrast ratio of 1,632 to 1, but it unfortunately had the worst color space coverage yet at just 57.8% for standard dynamic range content. After that, also for $250 is a new projector from Groveview, the company that makes the sub $200 projector that I recommend, and the Groveview C58 is a 1080p single LCD projector that outputs 639 ANSI lumens while drawing 120 watts. But it does have the highest black floor we've seen yet at 0.036 nits, giving it a contrast ratio of 1817 to 1. And the C58 also had a middle of the road SDR color space coverage of 70.1, putting it above the Wanbo projectors for both contrast and color space, but well below the Redeer and the Nexigo. Next for $280 is this absolute giant of a projector, the 1080p single LCD Caceres Omnistar L80. Caceres claims that the L80 is the brightest single LCD projector on the market at 1500 ANSI lumens, but in my testing it achieved slightly less than half of that at 721 ANSI lumens while drawing 171 watts, which is still enough to put it in first place for brightness. The black floor of the Caceres was similar to the Groveview at 0.035 nits, giving it a middle of the pack contrast ratio of 2062 to 1. However, the SDR color space coverage was the best yet at 80.8%. Next, coming in at $329 is the Emotion N1 1080p single LCD projector. 
Emotion is a sub-brand of Dangbei who makes excellent laser projectors, but I was disappointed to see that the N1 outputs just 333 ANSI lumens, which is 66% of advertised, while still drawing 97.8 watts. And while the N1 had the lowest black floor yet at 0.017 nits for a respectable contrast ratio of 1,945 to 1, it also had very low color space coverage at just 58.9% of standard dynamic range. Next for $399 is the Yabber K2S. Yabber is one of the biggest brand names in single LCD projectors, and the 1080p K2S is their current flagship. However, I measured the brightness of the K2S at just 475 ANSI lumens with a power draw of 132 watts, but it did have the lowest black floor yet at 0.015 nits, giving it the third highest contrast ratio at 2,813 to 1. The Yabber's color space coverage also finished in the middle of the pack, displaying just 65.5% of SDR colors. Also for $399 is a brand new 1080p single LCD projector from a company called called X-Ming, which is a sub-brand of the projector giant for movie. The X-Ming Page 1 is very similar in size and performance to the Emotion N1 and claims to have 500 ANSI lumens, but in my testing the Page 1 was slightly dimmer than the N1 at 319 ANSI lumens, but it also had a lower black floor resulting in a very similar contrast ratio of 1864 to 1. The similarities continued between the Page 1 and the N1 with color space coverage, where the X-Ming had 58.7% coverage compared to the Emotion's 58.9%. $399 was a popular price, and the new Haprun YG491 1080p single LCD projector was the brightest projector at that price point, outputting 492 ANSI lumens while drawing 128 watts. Unfortunately, the Haprun's black floor was quite a bit higher at 0.031 nits, giving it a pretty average contrast ratio of just 1770 to 1, and the color space coverage was also just average, displaying 68.5% of SDR colors. And that does it for the 1080p single LCD projectors, but next, for $499 is a completely different projector technology. The ViewSonic PX701HD is a 1080p DLP bulb projector that uses an older technology high intensity discharge bulb combined with a spinning color wheel and digital micromirror display to generate a very bright image with a more economical upfront cost. Some minor downsides of bulb projectors are higher heat generation and power use, but the biggest issue is that on normal brightness the bulb will begin to degrade after as little as 500 hours and will have a significant drop in brightness and color accuracy at around 2000 hours, with most people opting to replace the $150 bulb every 3,000 hours or so of viewing. In my testing, the ViewSonic PX701HD put out 1,814 ANSI lumens while drawing 240 watts, making it two and a half times brighter than the brightest single LCD projector, but only 51% of its advertised 3,500 lumens. Unfortunately, with that increased brightness came a significantly increased black floor of 0.189 nits, which is around 10 times higher than most of the LCD projectors, resulting in a less than impressive contrast ratio of 917 to 1 and a significant amount of light bleed all around the screen. ViewSonic also advertises that you can achieve a similar lifespan to these single LCD projectors by using the bulb in Super Eco Mode, but in my testing, Super Eco Mode reduced the brightness all the way down to 305 ANSI lumens, it lowered the contrast to 325 to 1, and it brought the SDR color space coverage down to 69.1% from 85.6% on standard brightness. And even though Super Eco Mode is prominently advertised by ViewSonic, I think you would be crazy to spend $500 on this projector just to use it in Super Eco where it performs worse than projectors that cost a quarter of that price. So after that, also for $499 is another different combination of projector technologies. The 1080p Dangbei Neo combines a long-lasting LED light source like we see in the single LCD projectors with the DLP image technology of the ViewSonic, which results in lower power consumption and much longer lamp life at the expense of brightness. The Dangbei Neo measured 541 ANSI lumens at just 62 watts, which is exactly as advertised, but unfortunately had a black floor of 0.108 nits, giving it a very low contrast ratio of 379 to 1. However, thanks to the LED light source and DLP imager, the Neo had by far the best color space coverage at 98.9% of SDR and even 90.42% of the HDR DCI-P3 color space. After that, right up at the $600 limit of my price range is another LED and DLP projector, the XGME Elfin. In my testing, the Elfin put out 574 lumens in bright mode while drawing 53.4 watts, 
and it had a black floor of 0.089 nits for a contrast ratio of 535 to 1, which is higher than the Dangbei Neo, but not nearly as good as any of the single LCD projectors. On the other hand, the XGME Elephant had excellent color space coverage, displaying 99.7% of the SDR color space and 90.31% of DCI-P3. Also right at the $600 limit, I imported the Xiaomi Mi Smart Projector 2, which came in at 354 ANSI lumens, drawing 58 watts, which is just 70% of its advertised brightness, and combined with a 0.08 nit black floor, it gave it an even lower contrast ratio than the Dangbei Neo at 368 to 1. However, like the Dangbei and XGMI, the Xiaomi also had very good color space coverage, displaying 94% of SDR colors and 90% of HDR colors. And last, again at the exact top range of my budget, is the $600 Paris Roan 4K projector, which uses the same single LCD technology as the less expensive projectors in this video, but substitutes that 1080p full color LCD screen for a 4K resolution full color screen. The Paris Roan is the exact same size and shape as the Caceres L80, and it puts out a similar brightness of 684 ANSI lumens, which is actually 15% higher than the advertised 600 ANSI lumens. The Paris Roan also had a very similar black floor to the Caceres at 0.036 nits, which gave it a respectable contrast ratio of 2,181 to 1. But unfortunately, the Paris Roan's color space coverage was significantly less than the Caceres, displaying just 65.5% of the SDR color space. Aside from brightness, contrast, and color, the next most important things to consider are focus and clarity. And I found that with these inexpensive projectors, one of the biggest downfalls is poor focus, especially with non-ideal projector placement. So let's talk about that. The first difference that you should know about is that these single LCD projectors typically have a vertical offset around 50% meaning the projector's lens will need to be positioned vertically in the middle of your projector screen. DLP projectors, on the other hand, tend to have zero offset, which means that the bottom of the screen is going to line up with the bottom of the lens, which is much better for ceiling mounting and for coffee tables. If your projector doesn't have the right vertical offset for where you want to put it, you can tilt the projector up or down, but that results in a skewed image that's going to need to be corrected with vertical keystone. Similarly, all projectors need to be placed horizontally centered on the screen, and while you can rotate the projector to aim it, it will also cause the image to be skewed, which needs to then be corrected with horizontal keystone. All the projectors in this video, except the ViewSonic, have what I consider to be the most convenient and easy to use form of keystone, which is called four point or geometric correction, and that allows you to pin the four corners of the image directly onto your screen using software. Most of the projectors also offer auto keystone using a small sensor on the front of the projector, but in my testing using the manual four point keystone was just as fast and gave much better results. And while the ViewSonic doesn't have four point keystone, it does have some other unique options like vertical keystone, vertical lens shift, and optical zoom. But for all those, there are some caveats. First, the vertical lens shift is nice, but no matter where you position the projector, there's always a large area of light bleed around the image, and the picture just moves vertically inside that light bleed area. And second, while the optical zoom is nice, I found it pretty strange that the focus on the ViewSonic is not calibrated with the zoom. So at the minimum and maximum zoom ranges, there's no way to adjust the focus knob enough to get even a remotely sharp image. But even so, the ViewSonic is the only projector in this video that can be positioned at different ideal distances, and all the other projectors have a fixed throw ratio. To test that, I recorded the throw distance required for each projector to produce a 100 inch screen, and you can see that the Wanbo T2 Max and Wanbo TT had the shortest throw ratios, and the Redeer and ViewSonic had the longest. And even when zoomed out all the way, the ViewSonic had the longest throw of 128 inches, and using its optical zoom allows placement up to 138 inches away to produce a 100 inch well focused screen. And on that subject of focus, all the projectors in this video except for the Nexigo and ViewSonic have motorized focus, which I do find very convenient because you can stand right next to the screen and use the remote to get the focus dialed in perfectly. And that leads me to my next test, which is focus uniformity and clarity. For this test, I positioned each projector in an ideal location for a 100 inch screen with no keystone, and I projected text of various font sizes under each corner of the screen. Then I took a close up photo of each corner and made a composite image to rank each projector for white text on a black background and black text on a white background. And in this first focus test, the Paris Roan 4K projector was a huge standout with extremely clear text, no color fringing, and no focus issues, with other high performers being the XGME Elfin and Xming Page 1, while some notably poor performers were the Wanbo T2 Max, Caceres Omnistar L80, and Xiaomi Mi Smart Projector 2, which all failed to produce a uniformly focused image, even with ideal placement. But in the next test, I offset each projector 20 degrees to the left and used horizontal keystone, which generally caused the right side of the screen to be significantly less focused. 
But the Paris Roan 4K and XGME Elfin still had excellent focus, while I thought the ViewSonic PX7 and One HD was the best, with the caveat that it didn't have horizontal keystones, so the overall image was still skewed. So now that we've measured all the individual aspects of image quality, we should be able to predict which ones will look the best. But in practice, things like color accuracy, gamma settings, and onboard image processing can make a big difference in viewing experience. So I set up two 100-inch white screens side by side to be able to evaluate the projectors head to head. Starting with the projector that's my recommendation under $200, the Groveview JQ818C on the left, and the least expensive projector in this video, the Redier P7 on the right. In this first round, I thought that the Groveview's color looked undersaturated and too cool, while the Redier was oversaturated and slightly too warm. But I ultimately went with the Redier based on the higher brightness and noticeably better sharpness. But I did notice that the gamma curve setting, which is how bright the shadows are compared to the highlights, seemed to be better on the Groveview and was more appropriate for lower brightness projectors like these, allowing for a lot more detail to be visible in shadow areas like Henry's black shirt. In round two, the Wanbo T2 Max on the left was up against the Redier P7 on the right, and the Wanbo was around 30% as bright as the Redier with less color saturation and less contrast, so the Redier easily won this round. In round three, the Nexigo PJ40 was on the left and the Redier P7 was on the right. And seeing them next to each other, I could tell that the issue that I had with the Redier wasn't that the colors were too warm, but that they were too green, and the PJ40's colors were significantly more accurate and natural. So that made round four the Nexigo PJ40 on the left and the Groveview C58 on the right. And like the Redier, the C58 had heavily green shifted colors, and the extra brightness of the PJ40 also made the colors pop more without being oversaturated, securing another win for the PJ40. So round five was the Nexigo PJ40 on the left and the Wanbo TT on the right. And again, the biggest issue was that the Wanbo had less than half the brightness of the Nexigo, and even in a fully light controlled room, 250 ANSI lumens just is not very bright. And the PJ40 on the left looked significantly better and easily moved on to round six, up against the Caceres Omnistar on the right. And on paper, the L80 has higher brightness and color space coverage than the PJ40, but that isn't what set it apart. Even though the focus on the L80 wasn't as good and the contrast looked a little bit weird to me, the gamma setting on the Caceres made viewing so much better in dark scenes, and the amount of additional detail compared to the Nexgo PJ40 was crazy, and I significantly preferred the image on the Caceres. So round seven then put the Emotion N1 on the left and the Caceres Omnistar L80 on the right. And this round was absolutely no contest, with the N1 significantly lacking in brightness and color space coverage compared to the L80. So then round eight put the Yabber K2S on the left and the Caceres Omnistar L80 on the right, and even though there was still something off for me about the color saturation, contrast, and focus of the Caceres, it still looked much better than the Yabber in both light and dark scenes, and again, this round was no contest. And speaking of no contest, the next round put the X-Ming Page 1 on the left up against the Caceres Omnistar L80 on the right, and it wasn't even a little bit close, with the Caceres having wildly better brightness, contrast, color, and a better gamma curve, outperforming the X-Ming in every single test scene. So next in round nine, the Hapron YG491 was on the left up against the Caceres Omnistar L80 on the right. And the Hapron looked fantastic. It had the same great gamma curve of the Caceres without all the weird contrast, focus, and color saturation issues. And despite significantly lower color space coverage, I thought the Hapron looked great in every single test scene. So round 10 was an interesting one. And in all honesty, I expected the ViewSonic PX701HD DLP bulb projector on the right to absolutely embarrass any single LCD projector that I put against it. And in bright scenes, it's hard to argue with three times the brightness paired with a much higher color space coverage. However, I thought that the Hapron actually held its own in brighter scenes, relying on its much higher contrast, which is definitely apparent in things like the texture of Henry's shirt and the detail in his beard. And in dark scenes, the six times higher black floor of the ViewSonic not only looked muddy and gray, but it also made it difficult to see any detail. And there were quite a few parts in the scenes where I couldn't even tell what was happening in the ViewSonic, but the Hapron looked incredible. So very surprisingly, the Hapron YG491 moves on and the ViewSonic ball projector is out. Round 11 then put the single LCD Hapron YG491 on the left and the DLP Dangbei Neo on the right. And in this round, I expected the Hapron to absolutely dominate since the Dangbei Neo's contrast ratio was almost five times lower than the Hapron. And the black levels did look a little bit gray, but the Dangbei looked surprisingly good in both light and dark scenes. And I was impressed by both the color and the clarity, but the Hapron on the left continued to wow me, easily moving on to round 12 against the Paris Roan 4K on the right. 
And the Hapron looked just as good as ever with excellent contrast, color accuracy, and a great gamma curve that I've mentioned a few times now. But seeing the 1080p Hapron next to the 4K Paris Roan made me think that the Hapron was actually out of focus. But upon closer inspection, it was just the difference between 1080p and 4K. And the Paris Roan looked so crisp and clear next to the Hapron. And even though I still preferred the gamma curve on the Hapron, the Paris Roan was good enough in dark scenes to take the win when considering how excellent the focus and clarity was. So round 13, put the $600 Paris Roan on the right up against the also $600 XGME Elfin on the left. And despite the XGME's significantly better color space coverage, the Paris Roan looked like it had better color saturation and accuracy in bright scenes, and in dark scenes, the superior contrast ratio of the Paris Roan also helped it easily win this round. And the last projector to go up against the $600 Paris Roan on the right is the also $600 Xiaomi Mi Smart Projector 2 on the left. And everything about the Xiaomi was terrible. It had terrible focus, terrible gamma settings, terrible contrast, and terrible color accuracy. And while the Paris Roan was right at the top of my budget category for this video, its performance more or less justifies its price. But I cannot believe that I wasted $600 on the Xiaomi, which probably would have been outperformed by the Groveview JQ818C. So after that very disappointing final round, I decided to do a bonus round for anyone considering stretching their budget a little bit further. And I put the $600 Paris Roan on the right versus the $800 JMGO N1 on the left, which was one of my favorite projectors from my portable projector video. And as we've covered, the Paris Roan is a 4K single LCD projector with an LED light source, while the JMGO N1 is a 1080p DLP projector with a triple laser light source. And I know that it's $200 more, but I was just as impressed with the JMGO N1 during this test as I was the last Time that I used it. Not only is the color space coverage excellent, but the gamma is also super dialed in, revealing tons of extra detail in dark scenes. And while the resolution of the Paris Roan was obviously higher, the JMGO N1 still looked very crisp and focused due to its laser light source. So even though the Paris Roan did have a higher contrast ratio and a lower black floor, it's pretty hard to argue with the picture quality of the JMGO N1. Still, staying in that $200 to $600 budget range, I did some additional side-by-side -side testing, and this was my final ranking for picture quality and overall viewing experience with the 4K Paris Roan on top, followed by the Hapron YG491, the Caceres L80 in third, and the ViewSonic PX701 in fourth. And at this price point, I think it's also reasonable for people to want to use the built-in speakers on these projectors, so I played the same clip from Star Wars Episode 9, and I ranked each projector based on its overall volume, bass, mid-range, and treble performance. And here they are from worst to best, separated into three categories. And first, we've got the internal speakers that I would never consider using. The second category has the speakers that would work in a pinch, but are definitely not a permanent solution. Julio, good to see you. You got something for us? From a new ally. A spy in the first order. A spy. Who? Good to see you. You got something for us? From a new ally. A spy in the first order. A spy. Who? Julio, <laughs> good to see you. You got something for us? From a new ally. A spy in the first order. A spy. Who? <laughs> Julio, good to see you. You got something for us? From a new ally. A spy in the first order. A spy. Who? And the third category is the speakers that I would have no issue watching an entire movie with. Julio, good to see you. You 
got something for us? From a new ally. A spy in the first order. A spy? Who? Julio, good to see you. You got something for us? From a new ally. A spy in the first order. A spy? Who? Good to see you. You got something for us? From a new ally. A spy in the First Order. A spy? Who? Julio, <laughs> good to see you. You got something for us? From a new ally. A spy in the First Order. A spy? Who? <laughs> Good to see you. You got something for us? From a new ally. A spy in the First Order. A spy. Who? Julio, <laughs> good to see you. You got something for us? From a new ally. A spy in the First Order. A spy. Who? <laughs> Good to see you. You got something for us? From a new ally. A spy in the first order. A spy. Also on the subject of sound, the fan noise of these projectors varied significantly. And here they are from loudest to quietest. Another feature that seems to be heavily emphasized in this budget range is the inclusion of a smart operating system and built-in apps. And in general, I would always recommend using an external streaming stick like the Fire TV. But I did evaluate the quality and compatibility of the built-in operating systems, and I divided them up into four different groups. First are the projectors that I would consider to have no usable smart features. And with these projectors, you're definitely gonna need to buy a streaming stick or have some other external source. Second are the projectors that advertise a smart OS but have pretty poor app compatibility and performance, which use an Android 9 operating system with mouse mode to operate apps like Netflix and Amazon Prime Video. And while they technically do work, they are wildly inconvenient and they don't support full resolution video playback. In the third group are the projectors that use the NetRange App Store, and unlike the second group of projectors that repurposes apps made for cell phones, the NetRange App Store offers full compatibility and licensing for Netflix and Amazon Prime Video, but other app availability is sparse, and there's no YouTube TV, no Disney+, Apple TV, or HBO Max, so you'll need a streaming stick if you want to use those apps. This group also includes the XGME Elfin, which uses Android TV 10 and generally has very good app compatibility, but isn't Netflix certified, so you'll need to use that workaround version that's built for mobile devices. And the fourth group are the projectors that have fully functional built-in smart operating systems that you could definitely use without a streaming stick. And those are the Yabber K2S, which comes with a Netflix certified Android TV 12 dongle, the Xiaomi Mi Smart Projector 2, which uses Android TV 9, but somehow still manages full app compatibility, and the Xming Page 1, which uses the most recent version of Google TV, giving it the best app compatibility of all the projectors in this video. Though I did find the Xming's version of Google TV a little bit laggy. 
And last, specifically for gamers, we need to talk about input lag. To test their best possible performance, I set up each projector with no keystone, and I put them into their specific gaming modes when available. I then tested their input lag using the Leo Bodner lag meter set to 1080p 60Hz, and I used that information to divide the projectors up into four groups. And the best group were the sub 20 millisecond projectors that should satisfy even the most competitive gamers. And those were the ViewSonic PX701 HD in 3X fast input mode, the X-Ming Page 1 in game mode, and the Nexgo PJ40 in game mode. All right, so it's conclusion time, and after all this testing, I gave each projector an individual ranking for each category, and then I tallied up the scores, where lower scores are better. Coming out on top was the Nexgo PJ40 with a total of 60 points, scoring particularly well in the brightness, contrast, input lag, and price categories, but performing poorly when it came to sound quality and color space coverage. The fan noise was a little bit loud at max brightness, but the PJ40 does have a variable speed fan, so you can set it to whatever you find acceptable and it will adjust the brightness of the LED light source accordingly. My biggest disappointment with the PJ40 was the relatively poor performance in the side-by-side -side testing when it came to low light scenes, due to a higher gamma setting than I would prefer, and it seems like that might have been a common issue. See, the PJ40 that I used in this video was purchased from Amazon and is what they call Gen 2, but I also have a Gen 3 unit where they've enabled the full custom picture settings menu from Android, which gives you access to custom gamma settings and 11 point white balance. And adjusting those to a gamma of 1.8 significantly increases the performance of the PJ40. And here you can see a side by side of the PJ40 Gen 2 on the left and the Gen 3 on the right. And you can see just how much those custom gamma settings increase the performance in dark scenes. And here's how it looks next to the Paris Roan, which finished number one in the viewing experience testing. I spoke with Nexigo and they still said they had quite a bit of stock of the Gen 2 PJ40. So if someone were to click on their main listing, they're gonna receive an older Gen 2 but they also set up a separate listing for the Gen 3, which I've got linked down in the description so you can get it now. Stepping up quite a bit in price, the Paris Roan also performed very well with a total score of 63, with high scores in picture quality, focus, brightness, and sound quality, but poor rankings in color, input lag, and of course price. But if you're not a gamer and you're just looking for a crisp, clear image in a light-controlled home theater, I think that the Paris Roan is a pretty good option at $599. But it would be a really excellent value priced between $450 and $500. Also at the top of the price range is the XGME Elfin that tied for second with 63, with high scores in color, fan noise, focus, and off-center focus. But it had middle-of-the-road brightness and viewing experience scores, mostly due to its relatively poor contrast. And between the two at that highest price point, I think the Paris Roan gives a significantly better viewing experience than the XGME Elfin, as long as the overall size, fan noise, and increased input lag aren't deal breakers for you. Especially since DLP technology can also introduce the rainbow effect for some people, which will never be an issue with a single LCD projector. As a reminder, there are no sponsored reviews on this channel, but I do have links down in the description for all the projectors in this video, and as always, I appreciate when you use those links, since as an Amazon affiliate, I do earn a small commission on the sale at no cost to you. I'd also like to thank all of my awesome patrons over at Patreon for their continued support of my channel, and if you're interested in supporting my channel and getting in on my monthly giveaways, including a projector from this video, make sure that you check out the links down in the description. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching The Hookup.